Okay, can you hear me without microphone? No. Okay, um, good morning, everyone. Um, I would like to thank Anna Wawrzeńczyk, who is the co-author of my presentation. She is not mentioned in my material, so I would like to give acknowledgments to her. I've got a lot to show you. And I have the sense of huge responsibility because these are very challenging topics, very difficult to discuss in just 20 minutes. So I'll be running and hopping across my presentation and I would like to encourage you to contact us. We'll show you contact details um, if you have any questions, if you are interested in reference materials or stats, please contact us. Okay, let me begin with facts and figures uh, which come from different Polish surveys. It's a hundred children, uh, gender equal split, more than 50% argue they are dissatisfied with their appearance. 12, 13% of children, they say they are miserable because of it. Okay, here you see the percentage of children who are trying to shed weight. And, um, you know, the weight is normal, boys and girls. Okay, and this may come as shocking for you on the top self mutilation against among teenagers, 13 to 15 percent, and below, this is research. Um, retrospective, uh, young adults were asked if they self-mutilated themselves when they were young, and 30% said yes, so these are Polish teenagers. Okay, and um, eating disorders and self-mutilation online, this is what I'm going to focus on today. Just to recap. Um, when children are seven, they are able to identify what is their body shape. But younger children, much younger children, do realize that they should be losing weight, and they know quite a lot about it. And what is even more disturbing, you have to keep in mind that uh, changes to the body during adolescence take a much bigger toll on females. So the question is, are we as adults, as educators, parents and teachers, able to keep up with different fads and different Vogues as several months ago, um, um, we had this huge fab bit, you know, to have thighs with a clearance in between. And right now, you should have this vertical line on your stomach, so it takes several months of workout. So, this is what teenagers are looking at. Do we know about it? So, that's my first question. And a couple of of words. I'm not going to read all that. Anorexia, bulimia, those disorders um, affect a slight population, percentage of population, but something in between intimate disorders are strikingly widespread. Okay, let's look at self-mutilation from 13 to 23 percent, depending on the survey. Um, but this is the figure for teenagers who inflict wounds to themselves. 14 percent um, of teenagers do it, and the biggest number accounts for 13 to 14 years, and these are mainly girls. Okay, the question is, why is it happening online? Why is it happening in the internet? Well, because there is no difference for teenagers if they are in the virtual or actual reality. They live their lives online. And on one hand, they are anonymous, and they feel to be members of this select club. Everything is glossed over. Anorexia is portrayed as glamorous. And it also helps them to build a community, to find people where the only point of reference for what they do are people who are following suit. And 
it's a perfect community for dysfunctional children. Okay, eating disorders. Okay, very briefly, what's the image of anorexia online? Um, well, it's glamorous. It's very glamorous. It's something that is portrayed and illustrated with beautiful peaks. Um, you know, fulfilled, happy people displayed. It's portrayed as something that it's very easy to cure. What is not a major issue, what is more a question of will, it's not a disease. So this is the common perception and portrayal and depiction of anorexia. Okay, and these are the inspirations, um, inspirations for teenagers to slim down all you have to do is, you know, Google it up and you'll find it. It's just a several clicks away for teenagers and more inspirations to slim down. Don't reward yourself with food. You're not a dog, says this wise website. See how degrading it is. See how radical are these messages. Okay, on the next page, we see a sentence that is very often encouraging teenagers to take more drastic measures. I want to be so thin that people whisper behind my back how skinny I've got. So, this inspires young people to steer interest, to steer excitement. Okay, it, it's not about the disorder, but it's true that if it's a girl, because these are mainly girls who are shedding weight, in the initial period, they receive a lot of positive feedback. People are saying, how beautiful you look like, and screenshots. Um, that show you how information is depicted, information about lovely T-shirt, and second one, you know, lovely PJs. Okay, I don't need to comment that. Okay, and um, a celebrity we all knew, know, Emmy Lee, this is a public portal, and I get to the essence of my presentation, the ever-trendy um, social um, media account called Pre-Recovery. So we are turning away from Pro-Anna. We are into Pre-Recovery now. So I was sick. I'm OK now. So this is before and after. But is it really Pro-Recovery? Okay, brief research, um, Instagram accounts, pro-recovery accounts, encouraging users to recover and get over the lowest and top weight plus descriptions. You know, see how it looks like? Is it different than websites or accounts promoting eating disorder? It's not. How are such accounts hashtagged? Well, on the left-hand side, you've got hashtag typical for pro Anna, and on the left-hand side, pro recovery hashtags. So there is a tiny difference, really. So when you are clicking on those hashtags, you can come across very different websites. OK, so to recap in brief, such pro Anna accounts and pro recovery accounts as well. You know, they are worlds apart. They have a different objective. They uh, champion different motivation. But what do we get there? Exactly the same thing. A huge selection, a very rigorous standards you need to follow, huge competition. It's a fierce competition. See how much weight I've got major focus on body, on eating, isolating oneself from other people, focusing exclusively on online efforts, um, external control, so watching each other, and 
identity which is inseparable to the disease. Just to give you an apt example, I've heard about it um, somewhere. A pre-recovery account of a person who ate chocolate will be cheered more uh, than if this person ate nuts, which are healthier, because it's about eating more, uh, and it doesn't matter if it's healthy or not. So it's very easy to forget that eating disorders um, have the highest fatality rate among all mental disorders. What are the after effects? of taking part in pro and and pro recovery uh, initiatives well it takes its toll on one's mentality it increases the drive for being slim and it reinforces the drive for perfection and on the bottom of the slide if you look at instant results after viewing such content well, users instantly feel heavier than they actually are. They also declare that they want to exercise more, that they want to start exercising more, and they start comparing themselves. It's a survey into teenagers. So what else do we watch online? Porn food. Okay, what you see on the slide on the left-hand side, this is a blog of a girl struggling with bulimia, and she's presenting um, her attack-inducing food. This is what I gorged on today. On the right-hand side, we have an account promoting um, conscious eating, but look at the middle peak. So this girl is skinny. And other accounts. Okay, so away from pro Anna, pro recovery are Fitzpirations accounts. So what's the objective? Inspire others to pursue healthy lifestyle, to eat healthy. But what is happening there? Well, overly focus on the body, we are still promoting the perfect image, we are still promoting exercising for aesthetic reasons, not to stay fit and healthy, but to be slimmer. And we are promoting very rigorous dietary regimes, so it's even more because anorexia and pro Anna accounts tell us be slim. Uh, pro fitness um, accounts are dictating be slim and have muscles, so they require even more. They put on par success with having a perfect body. And, you know, just to give you a snapshot. Uh, well, two groups of women were compared, those who possible fit inspirations, uh, inspiration to exercise and also something related to travel. And these are the data. Almost one-fifth of those who posted fit inspirations uh, presented the symptoms of eating disorders uh, in clinical form. Most of them uh, wanted to be slim they were bulimic, they uh, felt uh, that exercise was compulsory for them, that they were exercising in a compulsive manner. So, well, that was a very brief selection of thoughts about what should be to the benefit of the teenagers. We may say that it's good, it's no longer prana, uh, it's profitness. Well, the difference is not so big. Several photographs from what we see every day on the internet, it's just one click away. And maybe a few words. About self-injuries. Uh, usually, if we can see some 
eating problems or disorders, let's check whether there are no self-inflicted wounds. I mean, excessive slimming is uh, such injury also. Why? Uh, why do the teenagers do that? Well, they they actually don't know how to cope with their emotions, etc. So this helps them. Now, what is happening online related to this topic? Well, uh, there's uh, self injuries. You can you can find different tutorials, for example, on YouTube or on social media how to cut yourself, how to hide it. There are comments encouraging uh, people to commit suicides. There are different internet groups who are fascinated with death or, or self-inflicted wounds or while well, planning joint suicide. And again, this is seen as glamorous. I mean, the, the, the problems are are depicted in, in a very glamorous way. This is a screen from the so-called Hotel Sobieski group. Well, actually, this is a psychiatric hospital. And on the internet, there are closed groups of uh, patients from those hospitals uh, where young people try to provide support to one another. I mean, former patients, but not only so. This is a photograph from an account of the, of the person who suffers from eating disorders. And what tries is, well, exercise, uh, trying not to eat, stress. These are intellect. Well, of course, trying to convince anybody to commit a suicide or to do a similar thing is com it's, uh, treated as mm, uh, an offense in Poland. But one click away, you have the story of Toaster Steve, who said on an open channel that if a and sufficient number of people are gathered, uh, he will commit a suicide uh, live. Uh, he act well, you know, of course, the, gr the group was gathered. He tried to commit the suicide. He was saved. Blogs are also very popular. And again, one click away. And this is the content that you find. The descriptions are pretty attractive. And please think how teenagers may react to them. Another thing is uh, make it taming the death uh, using euphemism. Uh, instead of saying he killed himself, uh, that he catch the balloon to take him to heaven, or he became a butterfly, or see you soon. And such approach to suicide, especially shown on the media, uh, can uh, lead to other people committing suicide. You probably remember the case of Anya from Gdansk who committed suicide after she was bullied at school. That was disseminated widely. And after that, the Polish Suicidal Society uh, prepared uh, guidelines for the mass media how to handle such information about suicides. And it sent it to all the media in Poland. The only portal that actually follows the guidelines is on it. On it.pl. Now, uh, uh, how do we react when we hear about suicide attempt? Well, this is what we see. We prefer not to know. And this is what it looks like. Well, this actually is a very rare method of cutting. Now, now you cut so behind your ears, 
on the back under the hair so that nobody can see it. What else can we find on YouTube? A tutorial how to hide the scars. I'm not going to show you the videos, but it's really worth seeing them to see how easy it is to find different types of content. And what can we do? Two more minutes. What can we do with that? First of all, we cannot delete all that. We are not able to ban that or to control uh, the way which the teenagers are going to act. What we can do is to emphasize the difference between what is available online in an artificial manner and the facts. And there are three basic methods of informing our young people about suicide. Mm. Well, first of all, we don't give the facts, in instructions, the list of symptoms. We should rather focus on the impact of such disorders on the life of mm, uh, teenagers. You should not use any stories of uh, celebrities uh, people known from mass media, and you never invite young people who have gone through such problems, those who had eating disorders or tried to commit suicide, uh, um, to talk to other teenagers. Because usually in such a case, a young, attractive person would come uh, tell, to tell others how difficult it was, etc., etc., and such a person becomes a celebrity, and this may result in another wave of suicides. So how to uh, take care of positive image of the teenager's body? First of all, let's provide information about the changes accompanying maturity. Uh, let's promote critical thinking. Let's diversify between different types of posture uh, and different ideals of beauty. Let's teach teenagers how strong the words can be, that they should take care of their strong internal monologue. Let's uh, let uh, children work on their own image, what they want to disclose and what they want to keep private. And let's try to show them how to be satisfied with their own body. Because, well, at school, emphasis is put on the brain and body is not really mentioned. I would like to encourage you to work with teenagers, with young people, organize different campaigns, but in a safe way. Uh, this is, you are not a sketch campaign. I mean, showing the extremely slim people. Uh, another campaign with, uh, leading to positive reactions from the youth. Do not judge based on somebody's look. So, starting with how high the heels are or, or the length of the skirt. And we, we have different, different, uh, you know, adjectives. There is, there is no right method to look good. I mean, it's always bad. This is the world that we live in. Well, we don't have more time, so uh, I, I suggest you take a look at the campaign, two minute, two minute film, Don't Die. These are, these are our email addresses. I'm going to show you the short video. This is a campaign against anorexia, but it's actually showing the instruction, gives the tips of how to do this. So not all prevention is good.
When I grow up, I'm going to cheat and lie to my friends, to my parents, but most of all, to myself. Eat naked. Możemy powiedzieć, że będziemy jeść u kolegi, a zamiast tego udamy się na spacer. I starajmy się, żeby rodzice nic nie podejrzewali. Można wziąć zimną kąpiel, żeby metabolizm inaczej działał. A uderzyć się w brzuch, wtedy kiedy czujemy się głodni. Jeśli powstrzymamy się od jedzenia, to będzie oznaczać naszą prawdziwą, silną wolę i sukces. Ostatnie słowo. And the last word. Before you show something to teenagers, first see it for yourself to check whether it really will give you the effect that you expected.